stop the presses, this just in. As of the time of creating this video, the Heroes of Shadow translation team have officially released the translation patch version 3.01. So, if you haven't downloaded the patch yet and you're eager to play this game, I recommend getting that version. Uh, as I've explained before, uh, this update will fix the cutoff in name tags on the lowercase g, y, j, and the like, as well as remove one random internet meme reference uh, in a bonus chapter that um, pissed off a few fans. That's basically all it did, but I think it's probably worth getting, even uh, if you're, you know, looking to get into this game. If you already have the old translation patch, uh, that's where things get a bit tricky. You can transfer your old save file over to the new patch, but it can be a bit of a fiddly process. I had some difficulty doing it. Uh, it turned out that um, I only got mine to work when I manually exported my save file using Desmume and then re-imported it into the other ROM. So if all else fails, use that option. What you're meant to do is uh, simply rename the old ROM save file to match the name of the new ROM patch with the new version. Oh, speaking of which, um, you actually have to find a new, clean, purely Japanese ROM to patch the new version of the patch onto. Because uh, patching it on top of the old patch would cause some serious problems. Anyway, uh, once you've done that, you're supposed to be able to just rename the save file to the match the new ROM and it should work. However, I had a bit of trouble with that, uh, and I ended up having to manually export and then re-import the save file. But rest assured, I got it working. However, I didn't get it working until the start of Chapter 8, so it's not until then that you'll see the effects of the new patch in this playthrough. So I apologise in advance, the next few chapters are still going to have the text cut off issues. Just one warning though, while save files may carry over between patches, save states will not. So if you've got any particularly important save states, you might want to wait till you finish the chapter you're on and made a permanent save before you actually apply the new patch. Anyway, um, so everyone, go get the new patch, and uh, with that out of the way, let's get right back to it. Hello and welcome back to Heroes of Light and Shadow, where we last left off, we found out uh, what the title of the last chapter meant, uh, especially the sorrow part, but now, it's finally time to kick Lang's ass. Yes, it's finally time to liberate Groost. Lang is finally going to get what's coming for him, because you mess with the Altean Knights, you deal with the Sioux. Uh, but the chapter opening intro just goes on and on about, uh, oh, why would Hardin attack us? Why? He couldn't possibly have turned evil or something. But, for some reason, the best route back to Mark's homeland, uh, for some strange reason, involves, um, crossing the sea and going straight through Groost. But, then again, at least, as I said, we get to smash Lang's face in. And I'm sure you're all looking forward to that. For some reason, I always found translations like, it's been decided that, a little awkward. I don't know, I mean, it is a common feature in Japanese. I just think, um, it sounds a little weird in English to me. I prefer, like, we have decided, or simply just, we're going to war with Arcania. I don't know, um, sorry, I'm just nitpicking there. But now Jaken is going to explain a new feature to us, the Drill Grounds. And, well, that's actually what the majority of this part is going to be. Um, I warn you in advance, this entire part is just battle preparations. Yeah, I went a little overboard with the Drill Grounds here, but I kind of needed to show it off. But first, let's check out How's Everyone. Ah, uh, hey, we've got someone from Julian. I kind of like that one. No, oh, magic is not useful, but speed is. And I like her line too. <laughs> oh, come on! The moment I saw that, I'm like, alright, that's it, I'm keeping this safe file, because it's like... <laughs> oh, come on! 
what? So they give you the character who's totally not Kamu in the last chapter, and then we get his lance in this one. <laughs> it's like they wanted me to make obvious jokes about it. Nope, that lance totally didn't belong to anyone we've um, just recruited in the last chapter, no! Especially not, you know, when he was once a famous general, he certainly didn't wield a lance like that. In all seriousness, um, that lance is pretty amazing and I was lucky to get it. It's basically a killer lance and a silver lance combined, and it can be forged too. But be warned that forging it costs a ridiculous amount of money. Of course, these stupid hackers who can just hack their money will probably have fully forged versions of it on Wi-Fi, and yeah, that's part of the reason I don't play Wi-Fi. And if I did, if I did ever arrange a Wi-Fi battle with someone, I'd actually have no forged weapons as one of my rules, just because I think they can be totally broken there. Um, anyway, uh, we just missed talking about a conversation that mentioned Ricard, so, hmm, wonder if he's here, and now Ogma's going on about Bast. Are we going to be getting some new characters? Well, actually, you should get used to getting new characters. There are only, in fact, the number of chapters in this game where no new characters join can be counted on one hand, literally. So, you'd better get used to recruiting people. And right, after this current status, we're going to have an entire massive crap ton of support conversations. I don't know why I just suddenly got a huge amount right now. Anyway, um, so apparently Hardin always planned to invade us. And, um, so yes, um, everything we went through before were basi was basically just a trap to lure us away from the car so he could steal it. That's not very honourable, is it? So apparently we're going to have to return to Altea, but um, we've got to go through the bank stronghold first, which again is a good thing, because we finally, finally, get to give him the brutal impalement he deserves. Right, now that's a lot of support conversations, so uh, let's just look at them, shall we? Um, yeah, kind of weird I didn't get this one at the same time I got Luke's. Probably because I didn't use Rhodey as much as I did Luke in the prologue. I guess it's because Luke got lucky and gained defense early, and because of that, the extra defense really helped him, and I wasn't really using either of them, so I thought, um, you know, if you're not using them, probably best to go with the one with the better base stats, just for the moment. But, uh, anyway, um, so basically, this is just talking about the time when they got lost in Altea. Um, and... Oh, right, yeah, this conversation. Sorry, I only just remembered. This one, <laughs> this one's quite good, actually. <laughs> that ending, I didn't see that coming, but... <laughs> nope, that's not even a map of the area they're in. Anyway, um, unfortunately, we're gonna have to have another militia conversation. Oh, dear. You know, I actually think that nickname Brody gave Luke, oh dear, if you replace the pronoun, oh dear, she's crazy. Probably a more appropriate name for Militia. Anyway, it seems like, um... <laughs> it seems kind of like Jagan, um... She told Jagan about her feelings, quote-unquote, and then, um... <laughs> she was inevitably disappointed. But... <laughs> Love that sudden flip there. Yeah, Melissa keeps denying that um that she's childish, but then she keeps contradicting herself in that. Again, uh, according to the um uh I think they released official ages of this in the Japanese version, I don't know, but if it was the original mystery, they might have changed here, I don't know, but Melissa is apparently supposed to be eighteen. Um, but she doesn't quite act it. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Uh, and here's one with Linda. Despite the fact they have fought uh, quite a lot in the previous maps together. And in this one, yes, she talks about her, um, father. Yeah, I remember this this one. Um, I remember translating this back when I first got the game in Japanese, so I'm already familiar with this particular support. 
In fact, I'm already familiar with most of the supports that you'll be seeing in this playthrough, because, um... Aside from Sheeta, pretty much all the characters I'm using in this run were the same characters I used in my first playthrough. Well, aside from Sheeta and one other person, but we'll get to them later. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Bad move. Bad, bad move. But how is she supposed to know that? Yes, turns out Linda actually does have an angsty past. But, um, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if this changes, um, to, if you pick Orphan, because of course if you pick Orphan, yeah. I don't know if you did pick Orphan, maybe her parents might still be alive. Uh, yes, being even over tragic family deaths, that sounds a little, uh, kind of strange. Uh, right, now here's Ogma. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, um, given that I only had him on my side for one chapter, I am guessing the only reason I got this one now is because I got him in the prologue. If you didn't get him in the prologue, chances are, um, you probably won't get this support until a bit later. Yeah. Uh, and I also, also translated this one myself a little while ago. This one turned out to be pretty much the same as I translated it as, so, um, I don't really have all that much to comment on this, I, I'm already pretty familiar with this one. So apparently... Ogma does have some unresolved past issues. Oh, I'll go into this again. Oh yes, this again, yeah. Um... Wait a minute, so I guess, um, hey, I guess that's how Mary Sue makes friends. She goes up to someone and she's like, Hi, um, I'd like to get to know you, I'd like to be your friend. Eat sword! And then, of course, if everyone in the world was all fighting each other all the time, the world would be a much better place. I'm sorry, I... <laughs> I, I still always think that whenever I think of her grandfather's advice, but anyway. And Sheeta. I seriously hope there's no bad fanfiction die for our shipping in this one. And yes, it's um. Funnily enough, um, I didn't actually know this. Um, um, of course, this is my first time seeing this support because I didn't actually use Sheeta in my first playthrough of the original Japanese version. Um, kind of just felt like I kind of had to in this one just because she gets so many support with people. Um, and this is reminding me. Um, you know, um, having the Pegasus Knight slash possible main love interest. Um, um cooking, um, reminds me a lot of Chrom and Subia's supports, uh, in Awakening, um, which, um, yes, I've read them, uh, and yes, I support that pairing, but mostly because it seems as though the game is heavily leading towards being, it being the canon one, kind of like Levin and Fury, although it's not quite as ridiculously obvious as Levin and Fury, but almost. Anyway, though, what I was, what I meant to be saying here was, um, again, I kind of got echoes of that here, so apparently, yes, Sumia may have some echoes of Sheeta, but of course, Sheeta doesn't have Sumia's, uh, klutziness. Anyway, now I'm going to save here, because the next thing will require me to have saved, probably. Right, now it's time for me to discuss the drill grounds. I've got a lot to talk about here, but fortunately I've got a lot of video to get through, so I should have time. Now, the reason I'm going to the armory here is to sell the bullions I've had before. Um, yes, there's a pretty good reason for that, uh, and that is because, okay, essentially what the drill grounds is, is it's basically an arena, as you can see there. Um, so basically, the Battle Preparations Arena from Fire Emblem 4 has essentially returned. Except, um, it's got a few twists to it. Okay, firstly, you don't win prize money. So essentially what you're doing is, you're paying gold for the extra experience. Which is, uh, I guess kind of understandable. Secondly, characters can die here if they run out of HP, 
But seeing as you can freely save and reload as much as you want on the preparation screen, that's pretty much a total non-issue. Just save before you go into the arena, save whenever you get a good level up, and keep doing it, and you probably don't have to worry about death at all. So, again, yep. Yeah. Um, the main, uh, the third thing about this is, um, you have to bring your own weapons. And yes, they will lose uses. So again, be careful when wasting, um, good weapons like the Lady Sword in here. Unlike Fire Emblem 4, there's no way to repair weapons on the preparation screen. Oh, well, definitely don't want to go into that fight. You can just say no if you don't want to fight a particular enemy. Just keep repeating it until you get a matchup that you like. Really, that's all. And if you don't get any matchups that you like at all, well, just save and reload. You can do that as much as you want. Anyway, like I was saying, um... Unlike Fire Emblem 4, you can't repair your weapons here, which means that you can't just have a character spam a legendary weapon and get some zillions of experience in the arena like you could back in that game. So I guess it's a little more balanced in that regard. I also, though, despite the fact that you use your own weapons, I don't believe you get weapon experience in here. Uh, probably because I've never seen anyone gain a weapon level in, in this um, drill grounds. Uh, and that's probably... I probably have it right in assuming that you can't do that in this game. Um, presumably, yeah, because it would be pretty cheap if you could grind your weapon levels in here. Anyway, um, there's one more thing I have to talk about the, um, drill grounds. And this is something that the game doesn't quite make apparent to you. This is that stat gains via level ups in the drill grounds are actually fixed to a small extent. Now, it's not quite fixed in the way Radiant Dawn's bonus experience was, but it's similar. Essentially, how it works is, the character's growth rates are added up, but stats that are capped are ignored for this purpose, and here's where it really differs from Radiant Dawn. Again, stat growth rates for stats that aren't capped are all added up, and you are left with a number. For every 100 points in this final total, the character is guaranteed to gain one stat up. The remaining leftover points is the percentage chance of getting another stat up. Of course, which stat rises is determined by growth rates as usual. For example, Marth has a total growth rate of 395. This means that when leveling up in the drill grounds, he is guaranteed to gain 3 stats, and there's a 95% chance of him gaining a 4th stat. So basically, yeah, it's kind of like Radiant Dawn's bonus experience system, which can be a bit of a problem. Notice here, okay? Sirius just got 4 stats. That's actually pretty decent. But sometimes, often actually, it's possible that you'll gain better stats just by leveling up normally. Of course, there are ways you can kind of rig the system if you really care about stat gains. Apparently, Warrior is the class that has the highest total class growth, which means that reclassing someone to Warrior will actually give them better stat gains overall. Uh, unfortunately, Warrior is unavailable to females, and the closest a thing females get are... Warrior has, like, a total growth bonus of 110, if I remember correctly. The closest females can have is about 90, so unfortunately females kind of get shafted in this regard. Oh, and anyway, uh, Sheena is back. Um, uh, but remember that characters who join at the end of a chapter um, appear at the very bottom of the... Ah, um, uh, maybe I can give him his lance. Certainly he never used that lance before, no. Uh, but I won't. Anyway. Because they appear at the bottom, sometimes it can be easy to miss them. Anyway, you might notice that Sheeta now has, has the Wing Sphere. So yeah, Sheeta's one of those characters who comes with a brand new inventory, and that Wing Sphere is going to be really important, given that we're going to be seeing more and more armored units. Now it's time to, um, okay, this chapter, I think Mary Sue will be mounting Swift Sue again, who has inexplicably become a Pegasus, in true bad fanfiction fashion. Anyway, though, that means I have to get rid of all those swords, uh, and, um, I need an iron lance. Someone keep her an iron lance. 
Oh, you can add math lessons. <laughs> and she can't even use javelins. Wow, that's really sad. Javelins have pathetic might in this game, and still you need higher than an E to use them. That's pretty weird. Okay. Um, why am I drill grounding again? Um, who was I? Oh, wait a minute, that's it. I forgot Sheeta, that's right. Um, she's, yeah, she's got a bit of a, she's a bit behind in terms of levels. So, um, you know, I thought I might want to get her a bit of level ups here, as well as a couple of the actual chapter. Just to be warned, the upcoming chapter is going to be a Pegasus Knight Frenzy. So, yes, a lot of flying horses are uh, flying around. Oh, come on, stop giving me those guys. For some reason, you tend to face sword users in the arena more often than not. Uh... Which... <laughs> nice one, Shida. Which, yeah, can be a problem later on when I try to level up an axe user to be there. Again, though, if you get a fight you don't want, um, you can just press B to cancel. Unlike in the, um, in the, you know, in the, uh, actual in-chapter arenas, which I do think still exist in this game, um, uh, yeah, you don't waste your turn if you, um, find something you don't like, want it. Okay, there's Ricard. Now, if you position Julian just right, he'll be able to recruit Ricard on the first turn. Of course, there is Bast, and like that, if you position Offlet just right, you'll be able to recruit him on the first turn. Also, there's a bunch of snipers, and hi, George! Wow, you got the legendary bow, that's not good. Yeah, you want to stay away from those guys. Whole bunch of mages there, uh, silver sword cavaliers. Yeah, they're starting to get silver weapons here. Whoa, silver weapon crackers, that's not good. A uh, bunch of calves down there, a ballista boss, that's interesting, uh, and some armors. Uh, stone moist, um... Powerful, but stupidly inaccurate. You'll be seeing that in action later. Inconveniently placed save points, too. This might be a bit of a tricky one. We're gonna have to be smart about this. But, yeah, let's put our Pegasus Knights to the front so they can make good use of their good movement. Uh, got those other ones up in front, uh, just so that um, they can recruit their respective characters. And let's go!